my name is Dr. Ayo Miku, and um, I am an internet medicine trainee in the NHS in the UK. Welcome to my channel, Step by Step, Working as a Doctor in the UK. And if this is your first time on my channel, you're welcome. Please hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it with your friends, comment. This will ensure that you don't miss new videos when we up when we upload them and this will ensure that you don't that and this will uh, make make us know that you are actually watching these videos and would encourage us to make more videos thank you very much so today i'll be talking about a major challenge for doctors or anyone living in the uk especially doctors and that is renting a house so i'll be talking about how to rent a house or how to ensure that you get a house especially when moving to the next job you know as doctors we tend to move around a lot there's a high turnover and um, we could be moving due to training or just wanted to change hospitals or just wanted to change jobs so you, we tend to look for houses very frequently so how to ensure that you get the house you want to what are the things we should look for when you are looking to rent a house what are the things that you should look for so when renting a house the things that the landlord would usually look for is one will this person be able to pay my house rent so that would depend on your financial status your job so the landlord want to see that too will this person keep my house clean and tidy and in the right condition so they're not looking for a land a, 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 a they are not looking for a tenant that would destroy their property so that's why they would usually ask for reference from your previous landlord and from your employer another thing is some landlords will not take people with pets because they feel that the pet may destroy the house or may scratch the walls and some landlord will not take people with children because um, each house needs to have some specific safety measures to have children living in them so these are some of the things that could work against some people when they are looking for us for example have bad exam having bad reference from previous landlord or not having good financial status um, or not having a job when looking for a house so those are issues that people face when looking for a house but how can you overcome some of these issues number one ensure that you have a very good rapport with your previous um, or with your current landlord ensure that you've not spoiled the property so that they will give you a good reference <coughs> number two um have guarantors from UK house owner. So if you have someone that have a house in the UK, they can be your guarantor. So that would be helpful to at least the landlord knows that if you are not able to pay your rent, there is someone that um, can stand in for you. So have a guarantor. Number three, houses are very competitive to rent at the moment in the UK and sometimes offering like 25 or 50 pounds extra per month on the rent could make you be the favorite because for every house that you are um, approaching the landlord to rent there are like five six seven more people wanting that same building so some people have tried that if you are very desperate you could try that i wouldn't encourage you to do it often but if you're very desperate you could offer like 50 pounds more per month on your rent another thing is don't have a bad credit History. In my last video, I talked about credit rating, credit score, and credit history. Some of these as rent agents, they check your credit history. So ensure that you don't have a bad credit history. Also, there are multiple websites that you can search for houses to rent. There is Zoopla, there is Right Move, there is Open Rent, there is PeerRoom.co.uk. This is an this is not an exhaustive list. There are a lot of other websites that you can search for houses. Also, if you're still struggling to find houses despite taking all these steps, another thing that I found helpful was, for example, when I was working in an hospital, one of the colleagues made a post that, oh, that is there anyone working in this particular hospital? Um, I just need help with accommodation. So they chatted me up and all I did was, I con because I knew people would be living in August and their houses have not yet been declared vacant on Zoopla or Rightmove 
or on this website so i just asked that oh please if you're moving your houses soon please let me know and the people that were moving houses they chatted me up and let me know that they were moving so i contacted them on behalf of my friend i was looking for house and they just spoke to their landlord that okay when i move i have a friend i want to move into this accommodation and you know it made it so easy so many houses that so instead of the house coming to right move or zoopla or or this website and there'll be a lot of competition for it when you contact someone working in that hospital and they were able to ask around for you for someone that is moving soon there will be less competition for you because they will just recommend you directly to their agency or to their right and or to their landlord and believe me the this these agents and and landlords they don't want to go through the stress of advertising houses and all that so if they know someone that is coming in directly especially if the person is a doctor they would readily accept the person and you would avoid the stress of competing with other people for the same house so it's a very reliable method if you are looking for accommodation close to an hospital look for a doctor working in that hospital or anyone working in that hospital and if they are kind enough they can help you ask on the whatsapp group for doctors or physically ask other colleagues please if you're moving soon please let me know i have a friend that need a house but this usually work in june july and towards august because august a lot of doctors rotate and a lot of doctors leave so during that period there'll be a lot of people leaving their current accommodation so if you're looking for a house around that period then you are most likely to get a house through this method then what are the things you should look at when checking a house on this website or physically what are the things you should check out number one number one you should check i mean the general the, the picture of the house how big does it look how comfortable does it look but you should be warned that pictures are deceptive there are ways there are angles that they can take these pictures that will make the rooms bigger than they actually are to check the environment of the school or of the sorry of the of the accommodation check the environment of the house or the accommodation that you're looking at for example you would want to know about if there are schools close to that accommodation. The reason is because if you have kids, you don't want them going too far to go to their schools. Or you don't want to travel 30 minutes to check your children to school. Then another 30 minutes backwards to go to your work. That's almost one hour school, uh, um, school runs every morning, which is not good for you. The same thing when you finish at work, you want to be in your kids school as soon as possible and back to your house as soon as possible so for people with kids this is important for them ensure that there are good schools around where you live there will be schools around but good schools are very important three when checking the house online check for facilities are available around where you're living things like train hospitals you know you need to check how far the accommodation is from your hospital you need to check if there is good transport from that accommodation to your hospital unless you have a car if you have a car you may not bother if there is good um, bus from your where you live to your hospital but if you don't have a car it's very important that the bus stop is close to your house and will drop you in your place of work so if you have to imagine if you have to walk 10 15 minutes to the bus stop every morning to get to the bus stop that will take you to your hospital and when you come in back in the evening you still have to walk another 15 minutes from the bus stop back to your house that would be very difficult that would be very difficult so check the distance from the house to your place of work check if there are bus stops around check if there are train stations around hospitals check if there are schools around check if there are supermarkets around but that is not um, of big importance you can always take buses or uber or cab to go and do your shopping okay another thing that a lot of people ignore <coughs> the thing, uh, another thing that a lot of people ignore is the epc rating the epc rating is a rating of how energy efficient that house is many people ignore it the best rating is a and b c d then it gets worse towards the end a b c d e it gets worse so the best is a the worst is e 
if you add a, a rating, it means the house is energy efficient. And it means that you wouldn't have to pay a lot for the electric. That, that means you're likely, you, are, you will lose, you will use less um, energy. And if you use less energy, you pay less also. But the ones that are less energy efficient, you are going to have to pay a lot of money for using energy. And energy efficiency is based on the facilities that are available in the house, such as things like the gas cookers, the um, the co electric cookers, the kind of um, eaters that they have in the house. Some eaters are energy efficient, while some are energy e expensive. Um, many other gadgets in the house, the bulbs. So they put everything together to give a rating to the house. So personally, I don't go for any house less than a B. Because C D E, it means that they you are going to use a lot of energy, and that will take a lot of money from your purse. And in the UK now, there's energy crisis, and people are struggling to pay for power. You don't want a house that will drain your money. So look at the EPC rating. Then regarding online versus physical inspection of the house. I think you should avoid online if possible. Go for physical. Number one, there are many things that they won't show you during online. For example, they won't show you the outside of the house. So I've seen people move into do online inspection of the house. And by the time they get to the accommodation, then they notice that there's a big construction going out on in front of your house. Noise every time, pollution every time. This is not good for your health. Another thing is, uh, I've, I, I, there was a time I saw a very good house online and it looked like a very brilliant, very good, my perfect house. Then when I went to check the house physically, it was located on a farm. On a farm. And there were no amenities around, no bus stops around, no shops around me, no local shops to buy things around. So I was so lucky that I went to check the house physically. Then, when you go to check your house, check things like eating. Make sure there are no leaks. Make sure there are no molds. Make sure that all the eaters are working. You know, those are the things that you should check when you go to inspect a house. I believe this video has helped anyone looking for a house. If you have any questions, please drop it in the comment section and I will answer. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Thank you very much.